Hello out there. Glad you're joining me. This is Lunch with Laura, and I'm Laura Lee Collet. I live in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Totally addicted one. I absolutely love it. And if you are into stamping, scrapbooking, making cards, keep it up. If you know somebody that you think might like it, bring them on. We always need new people and new ideas. Well, today I'm going to be showing you a um, one of the new stamp sets that's in the January June Mini, and um, I did it a couple of different ways to give you some ideas. And I tried something that I'm sure has been done before, but I have not seen it. So I'm going to claim be the claim to fame to do this technique, okay? So let me get you pointed down, and we... I don't know why that happened. But now I think we're back in business. Let me lower that just slightly so that you can see my website, Stampin' at the Bird Nest com, and our host code for January. Now... I am going to be using Enjoy the Moment stamp set. This is found in the January, June mini catalog that Stampin' Up! just released this month. And um, I also wanted to remind you that it is celebration time. For every $50 you spend, you get to pick out an adorable stamp set, paper, other things that are in here, and they'll be free. Hey, we all like that. What could be better than free? All right, with this stamp set, before we get started, I wanted to show you something that I um, saw online and I wanted to refresh your memory about this, and it's about taking the sticker labels that go on the rubber stamps. So I have left two so that we could do those, and I could show you, oops, what it looks like. And I'm gonna put this on here so that maybe we can see it a little better. The first thing you're going to do is take your sticker sheet and instead of peeling off the top layer, you're going to go all the way to the bottom and peel the whole sticker off. Then you're going to put that on your block and then you're going to Take your fingernail or take your pick tool and pull that off. So now you've got your the uh, sticker that shows you which stamp you're uh, going to be stamping with. Now I'm, I poke that out of the rubber. I'm going to peel the back off. And I'm going to put it down with the stem facing this way. And I don't know if you can see it, but the edge of the sticker is where you want to match with the edge of your stamp. And then you have it. Now, it was a little bit off, but sometimes that's just going to happen no matter how careful you are. But I think that this way of doing it is much easier than putting the stamp upside down on here. At least you're able to see through the block. And I'm gonna do this last one. And then give you another little tip. I love giving tips. I don't claim to know it all, but I do love thinking I do. <laughs> okay, so we've got our stem to the right. So that's correct. And I'm going to go all the way down, and there you have it. 
so if you can see it, that one came out perfect. Now, I usually throw this away because we now have some stickers that are in the catalog on the adhesive page that for the old, um, we have new glue on this that, that is super sticky to st stick and stay on the acrylic blocks. Before we had this, occasionally if you had any uh, fingerprints or dirt on your block, your stamp might come loose. And I saved these and cut them and put them on there, which you can certainly do. So, I wanted to show you what else I do that helps me keep my stamps straight. I used to throw away this frame that the stamps came in, and then I started putting them, actually it's easier when they're all out of here, So I'm just going to take this whole, if I can get the stamps off, <laughs> this whole frame and set it inside my case. That way, I find it's easier to keep up with your stamps. It's kind of like the way I do on the uh, dies where I outline the magnet with um, the white pen so that when you, immediately when you look at it, you know if you are missing something. Okay, so that's how I keep up with these. The rest of these we're gonna be using today. So let's get on to our project. And we're making a birthday card today. I, the first thing I did, let me get all this cleaned up is that I, um, I made it in, I guess, the manner we usually do, which is um, cutting your paper at eight and a half by five and a half. And then it can either go this way or this way. And I decided just for something different, I was gonna go ahead and um, change the orientation so that this is the way the card is going to open and close this time. So, as you can see, I had to add a little bling on these, so you'll have to let me know what you like the best when we get down to that point. The birthday, um, happy birthday is stamped, and then I'm going to show you how to make that cute little layered thing so that it looks like it's a... Um, I forgot what you call it, but anyway, where you have a two to two or three different size uh, punches, and then you can layer it on like that. So I used one punch, and I'll show you how to do that. So let me tell you the colors that we're going to be using today. This is one of our end colors. It's cinnamon crisp, up oh, cinnamon cider. I always want to think of the dessert. And I have cut this at 11 by four and a quarter, and it's scored at five and a half. So that's your card base. Next, your layer of old olive, and it is cut at four by five and a quarter. It's gonna fit right there. And I'm just going down in a fourth of an inch increments. So this one is three and three quarters by five. So that'll be the top layer. And then I also have a layer that'll be on the inside of your card since it's kind of dark. All right, let's get on with our stamping. We are using four different colors today. Soft suede, and I try not to do this often. I am opening all of the stamp cases at the same time, I mean the ink pads at the same time. This one is cinnamon cider to match the base. Crushed curry, 
and old olive. Now, I um, meant to tell you what all of these were, and I um, ran it off, and you could not see the words. So I um, am guessing when I tell you, I know that this is a sweet bu sweet gum uh, seed. So these are all seed pods. This one comes, I believe, from the maple tree. And then these, you a lot of times you'll see in dried arrangements. And this just appealed to me because I've used many of these before. And living in different parts of the country, you may see some of these that are not dried. They might be live. So um, I'm sorry I can't tell you the names of those. But anyway, okay, this is what we're going to start with. This is probably my favorite of all. And sometimes the little seed pods fall down in there and you can shake it. I guess it could have been a toy in the olden days. So I'm gonna stamp up my um, seed pod with crumb cake. I think I might've called that early espresso. Oh no, it's soft suede, I'm sorry. And I'm just gonna randomly Stamp this. Put that aside. Next, I'm gonna stamp the, these cute little gumballs and they stamp so great. And I'm gonna put them like so. We had gumball trees in our sweet gum trees in our yard when I was growing up and daddy always was threatening to cut them down and we just loved them because they changed colors and then you had these he didn't like them because the lawnmower would run over them okay didn't those stamp great now I wanted to add just a little bit of green in here but I found that when you stamped the old olive, it was too green, too dark. So I'm stamping off before I stamp it on my card. That way you still get the color, but it's not quite as intense. And let's see if I can get that one a little better. Nope, I missed, that's okay. You know what that means. We can do something to cover it up. All right, I am going to close all my stamp pads so that I can try to keep from getting my project in the ink where I don't want it to be. And I wanna go back and show you the front of the card. Okay, this raised portion here is an embossing folder. And the embossing folder I'm using is also in the new catalog and it is called Painted Textures. So what I'm gonna do is take our stamped image and place it in here and run it through. And before I do that, I wanna show you the reason I'm doing it and the order I'm doing it in. This is what it's gonna look like when it comes out. You've got the texture here, but for some reason it doesn't really interfere with your printed um, images. Now this one, I did the embossing first and then stamped. And see how you get little places so that's a rule that I use is to, if you're gonna combine the two together, always you do your stamping first. Okay, I'm gonna raise, raise my camera up a little bit. I wish I had one of those. I saw one that somebody was using where they just must have had like a knob or something and could focus in and out. Hmm, may have to investigate that. Okay, so here is our stamp 
and I mean our cut and emboss machine and you're going to use the same sandwich that you usually use and remember if you forget you can look at plate one and it gives you the directions for using the 3d ones and the other ones if it's too hard going through you've got too many layers that's just rule of thumb if it's too easy sometimes you don't have enough pressure so i'm going to put in plate one plate two then i'm going to put in my image inside the embossing folder and take one of the plate threes now i recently saw that some people were having trouble with their embossing machine catching on and it's easier to get it to start if you will just offset the plate slightly instead of having them all at the same angle. So let's see how that does. Oh, oops. I um, don't have my hand at the right angle or something. It's wiggling around today. Now, put my machine away. And all my tape has come loose that's holding my cute little paper there. Okay, let's see what we've got here. All right. It's almost like magic the way that it comes out. And it is textured under there, but it just doesn't show up on the printed part. And that's what I liked. Now... I thought that this was a little bit too stark. And what I did, I wanted the background to show up a little bit more. So I've done some sponging. And I took a, crump, uh, a sponge dauber and put it in the soft suede. And I just very lightly put it over the raised portions. This is one of the times that a little is good. You can always add to it. If you put too much, you're going to be stuck with that. So just lightly go over where you want that, those little marks to be. And that shows up. Now, next thing we're going to do is work on our happy birthday. So, and let, I'm going to go ahead and adhere these since we are not using, oops, that one just ran out. Since I'm not using ribbon that's going to go around the, car, the front of the card, I'm going to go ahead and stick this all down. And let's make sure we're opening it the correct way. Now, I could have done it so that it opened this way, but I didn't do that. So, sometimes on these very deep textured um, embossing folders, you have to use heavier tape. This one wasn't quite as um, more of the flat area was able to catch the adhesive. But if it's one like a basket weave or one that it's kind of the same print all over, those are a little bit harder to, I'm putting some in the middle, to make stay down. So you might want to use either your stamp and seal plus tape runner or the tear and tape yeah we got that next we're going to stamp our birthday sentiment here it is and you can see i've already been practicing on this 
and <clears throat> let me remind you too because I often see people that just mash down these are foam they're not like the old linen mats where we had to really you know work it to ink it um, these are softer and if you're not careful you'll get a halo around your your uh, stamp okay I'm gonna just put that one right there close her up I'm using the label me fancy punch that came out at last year's January Mini, but they carried it over, thank goodness, because it's a, a very useful um, punch. You can see that it has a little hole and also a little slit there, so if you want to use it to tie on uh, a greeting on a package or something or on your card, you can do that. I'm going to punch the happy birthday out. I'm also punching the old olive. Oops. And the cinnamon cider. Yeah, I think I said it right that time. And I kind of played around with it and, okay, do I want that to be on the bottom? And I decided to do it the same way that I had matted my card. So I'm going to put the cinnamon cider on the bottom. Then I'm going to have the um, old olive next. Now, due to space issues, I'm using a little cutter that if you joined during last year, or maybe it was two years ago, you got this little cutter in your kit. They're always throwing in some little extra things at celebration time. So if you have any questions about that, do ask me. Now, we want these to look like they were meant to go together. So I am looking at this first little notch. And I am going to cut that off. Let me get this where you can see it. Okay, well, I'm going to do it on each side. And then for the birthday, I'm going to cut close to the words and I'm going to leave the little side curves. You know, I didn't ever think I'd use that little bitty thing, and I use that cutter all the time. Now, I'm going to put my silicone pad down so I don't get adhesive on my paper there. And I'm going to put this right in the middle of the old olive. Then I'm going to put the old olive right in the middle of the cinnamon cider. Okay. That may be a little a little off, but oh well, that's the way I meant for it to be. So there's the happy birthday. And I'm going to use um, dimensionals. This is the edge. I'm almost through with this one. So don't ever throw anything away. I'm going to put three dimensionals there to, to tack it down. But before I do that, I want to take my linen thread. Now, what I do, these come on a card. Sometimes you'll get um, baker's twine or whatever, and it's on a little spool. I save these when my ribbon is empty, and then I just like them better to be on a, a spool like this. So there's another little organizational tip. Now, I'm going to take my linen thread. I'm going to wrap it around my fingers like so, and I'm going to put it down like underneath the greeting. 
So I'm deciding that I want it about there. So I'm gonna put some adhesive right there. And it doesn't really matter if your um, loops are the same size or different sizes or if the ends are poking out. I'm just going to lay it down. And there's that one. It's gone kind of crazy or gone rogue, I guess I should say. That's I heard that on TV. So. There we are, and then we're just gonna take the happy birthday and put right on top. Now, we need something on the inside, and I got my adhesive a little bit too far, but that's okay, I can get that off. They, uh, we used to sell these little um, adhesive removers, but we don't anymore. I think you can get them at Hobby Lobby or one of the big box stores. Now, on the inside, I think, since I really love the sweet gum, I think that's what I'm gonna do. So let me put on my ink again. And I'm gonna put one in this corner, one in this corner. And then I'm going to leave this blank so that you can put your whatever you want to write to your friend, family member. And it can go right there in the middle. Just roll your finger along that until you get the sticky part and it'll work well. And remember, too, that you need to do like a check mark or a little jerk with your hand so that it breaks the adhesive. Now, I did the inside vanilla the same size as this so that I wouldn't get mixed up. So it's a little bit smaller than what I usually put in there, but I think it's great. I'm gonna put my, did I already close up my stamp set? I'm gonna put my Hallmark on the back, I did. Now, I'm using tone on tone, which means I'm using the same color ink as paper. And that shows up really well. Don't forget your hallmark. You want to be, um, you want people to know that you did these fantastic cards. Now, before I close, I just want to talk to you a little bit about coloring. When I seem to be so literal on the way I color things, and you need to think outside the box sometimes. These are all kind of fall colors, kind of dried, except for the green. And so while I was playing around, I don't know, the thought just came to me. I wonder what it would look like in a different color scheme. So what I did was I did this in four different color blues. I used Night of Navy, our new Misty um, Moonlight. This is Pacific Point. I'm not sure I should have put that one in there. But then this was the Seaside Spray. But look what a different look it gives. So this doesn't necessarily need to be for, you know, November or the fall months. It can be used all year. And I just think it adds so much. And last week I forgot to add my bling and my ribbon. I could not believe that I forgot that on that beautiful hydrangea card. So before I let you go, let me show you two ideas. These are the champagne rhinestones. And I think with these colors, it does fine. I was totally out of the magnetic pearls, not magnetic, metallic pearls. 
And so what I did on this card, I took white pearls and a gold permanent paint marker. And I just, let me get over here where you can see this. All I did was just color over these. And your um, blends will also, can also be used for this so that you can get any color pearl you want. Now, the secret is that you do need to let them dry for just a minute. So on this one, I used the magnetic pearls that I colored. And you'll have to let me know in your comments what you think, which one you like the best. But that's two different alternatives. You can also color your clear rhinestones any color you want. Okay? Now, on this card, I used some uh, Early Espresso ribbon, and I, I decided I didn't really like it. So, that's why I went with just the linen thread right there. So, that is today's card. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to place an order, please go to my website, stampinatthebirdnest.com, and put in this host code. And I remembered to take my glasses off this time so that you wouldn't know I have to wear glasses over my contacts. You know, whenever you do this and you look at yourself on TV or whatever, <laughs> Kind of see what you really look like, don't you? <laughs> well, anyway, I've had a good time with y'all. I am really getting into being on live, so I hope you're enjoying it. Please give me your feedback. Be nice. And uh, I will see you next week for some more tips, techniques, and a new card. Take care. And listen, while I, before I go, one more thing. We're all struggling with being at home, with not seeing our friends and family. What better way to brighten someone's day than sending them a card, especially one that you've put your heart and soul in. So send somebody a card. Send uh, your groups. I have two Pequeno groups that I need to send a card to. And um, anyway, it'll brighten somebody's day and it'll even brighten yours. So take care. I love you. See y'all next week for another Lunch with Laura. Bye.